Okay, let's try that one more time. All right, let's try any number of things one more time. All right, so uh, in the last couple of years, I've played in a bunch of games that have been run at a couple of different locations and times. And uh, I've played in them. I've even put, helped put some of on. And I got to thinking, we made decisions in doing these games. I wonder if we made the same decisions that other people did. And so this led me at uh, uh, that, plus an interest in finally giving a presentation at one of these summits, led me to uh, try to put some information together. Uh, I surveyed uh, some, unfortunately, relatively small number of people who were involved in these events uh, over the last uh, couple of months and uh, collected a bunch of findings from their perspectives, both as people who were the original GC and people who were the recasting GC. Uh, so let me just dive right into kind of what I found. Um, also, just to give a quick, uh, uh, you'll note that I only have 10 slides here, so that I'm aiming for this to be less of me talking, and there'll be plenty of time for like questions and discussion. So one of the first questions that comes up is, uh, if you're running uh, somebody else's game, is what, what's going to get shared? All right, it's really obvious and you know that you'll share all the you know electronic copies of your paper puzzles. Right, that's e really easy to do. Physical objects, if you're doing a recast, that's really easy. Put it in a box, mail it, and mostly it gets to the other side. Uh, notes. It, this starts. This is where it starts to get kind of interesting. If you're the type of uh, game control, or the original people are the type of game control who will write really clear notes for volunteers in the field, then your recasting GC will love you because those are the type of notes that are really useful for recasting the event. They're written for an audience who doesn't know how this puzzle works necessarily. And, uh, uh, and they're not written for, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, they're not written for your buddy on GC who already knows it intimately. Uh, so notes for, for in the field work really well. And we did this for Bing 28, and you know, hats off to, uh, we were just following Shinteki's example of this. They do a great job of that. Uh, one thing that uh, from the survey we discovered, is, I discovered, really important to be careful what gets shared. Uh, in all cases, GC intends to, has intended to share the final version of all their files. However, in not all cases did the final version of all files get shared. So various people in the uh, survey noted that uh, they would get confused by, well, this isn't the version of the, pic the, the puzzle that we saw when we played. And then confusion can, can result. So it, it, it's really careful. Uh, uh, a person needs to be careful here that don't necessarily take what's been shared uh, as, as gospel. Um, interesting thing about technology, for the most part, everyone basically said, yeah, we'd love to take everything that, that other GC is willing to share. But a lot of people on GC are nerds, and nerds like building stuff. Sometimes build, the, doing a game is just an excuse to learn something. Uh, and you know that's cool, right? If you want to do that, just sort this out ahead of time. Uh, and Either that, yes, I'm going to share, need that that system, or I'm not. Um, I'm seeing a lot of like smiling and nods in at least here in the Bay Area. So I think at least some people are agreeing with me. Um, hey, Rich, just incidentally, if if are, are you monitoring Seattle? If they can't hear me, or we can hear you great. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Super. All right. Uh, next up is so how how are we going to share things? A lot of a lot of people uh, use Google Sites for their their GC you know site. That works great. It's 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 a great place to scribble down a bunch of notes. Turns out, unfortunately, Google Sites just sucks dead bunnies when it comes to sharing files. Uh, it doesn't do version very well. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't do version very well. It doesn't have really good organization. Dropbox, on the other hand. Uh, we've you uh, I got to use recently for an event and it worked really really well so if you're thinking about doing this just keep that in mind um, <laughs> the the other thing that is a surprise to at least a few people is don't expect the other site necessarily uses the same uh, tools that you do uh, there are there's the cabal who uses illustrator and JavaScript and Apache and then there's a cabal who uses like Microsoft publisher and silverlight and if you get a dot pub file uh, the day before you need to run the event, um, that you know you, you sort this out ahead of time, right? Just know know the tools. Um, the having a conference call walkthrough after you you you've 
you've shared the permission on your site, you've mailed that, that big ass box of physical objects to the other site, that conference call walkthrough is a really useful uh, uh, tool to cover all the little incidentals that you just wouldn't have thought to discuss that, that aren't on the site, that didn't get mailed, that you can explain when, when other GC says, so you sent me this box and it has a bunch of like little broken bits. Like, oh God, no, that they were one big bit before. It, the conference <laughs> call is really good. It's also really useful for setting up uh, an introduction of all the, G, the recasting GC with all the original GC. So that when you need to subsequently have an email con, uh, con correspondence between two of those people, they've at least had a conference call uh, introduction. So near as I can tell, nobody I spoke to was in an event that turned a profit. Uh, I'm, I'm now kind of wondering if anyone's ever run an event that's turned a profit. Uh, the, there, because there's this notion that it'd be kind of neat if the, if the recaster made money and the original event didn't, maybe the recasting GC could help defray the cost of the original. That just, it, it's a neat idea, but it hasn't come up yet. Uh, it's probably worth setting expectations with between the two GCs ahead of time, though, because this is a really awkward thing to discuss at the end, uh, uh, especially when maybe recasting GC says, oh, well, we have an extra $200. What should we do with it? Let's buy you know, extra bagels for everyone, whereas original GC might say, well, could help pay for that really expensive thing. Anyway, uh, one of the themes you're going to hear from me in the next the remaining five slides is set expectations with your other GC ahead of time. That's really just one of the important things here. Probably the biggest issue that you do need to sort out is how, wh where does editorial control lie uh, when, when it comes to modifying puzzles? And there's a spectrum. On the one end of the spectrum, you know, a puzzle might have you know, a bug. It happens just occasionally. Uh, do you want to fix those bugs? Probably. Start heading down that, that spectrum. Uh, maybe you want to change the puzzle order because the locations in the Bay Area are just laid out differently than in Seattle. Maybe you want to now improve the puzzle, make it a little more elegant. You had an idea that just you think it will work out better than those people down in the Bay Area did. Uh, okay, now now suppose you want to change the entire story arc at the last third of the, the event just because you think that maybe it would work better. Maybe you want to change the meta puzzle at the very end of the event. Uh, this is a spectrum. Where do you want to draw the line? There's another question here, which is, does the original GC get to or want to review all the changes that recasting GC will make? Again, set the expectations set the expectations on the outset. But this is, again, a really awkward thing to set halfway through when recasting GC starts making changes to puzzles, and then original GC says, OMG, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. So this is, this is an important question to ask ahead of time. Um, the, and it's related to this next point, which is when you're doing this recast, are you aiming for this to be uh, a rerun of a previous event where it, it feels like it was part of the same event? It's all the same experience? Or does this feel like it, it was inspired by the original event, but it's based on the same soup of puzzles, and it might, you might have a bunch of things different? Uh, so here's a few, uh, a few specific examples. The, the Who re recast was really meant to feel like the same original event. And you know, I'll let people who played you know, say whether they felt that it, it hit that. Uh, Bing 28, on the other hand, the, from the original GC's point of view, the goal was simply to have the same puzzles and, and sort of core feeling of the event, which was you know, we had glowy things at night. Uh, anything more, any higher fidelity than that is kind of gravy on top. But these are, again, two, two spectrums. Uh, I think generalizing a little bit from some of the other comments I got in the survey, these longer games, they're, they're kind of epic adventures. And people who want to play in them, want to feel, if they're playing in the recast, they want to feel that they had the same epic adventure that their friends who played at the other site had. Whereas if you're playing in a shorter game, it, it really just you, you, you want to feel like you had sort of the same general experience. And if you end up getting even a different meta puzzle at the end, you know, not, not a big deal. This, okay. Uh, Locations are kind of fun in trying to uh, recast. Some locations uh, have specific features that are important, and they might be able to be constructed. So the Viking Bang, uh, Bang 26, Snap 6. Uh, Seattle had this great puzzle that was based on, uh, in Bergen Plaza, I believe it was, and it had these uh, uh, um, flags of uh, um, Nordic countries. And the 
what what the local GC in Bay Area did was they just remade that own, their own plaza by buying these flags and putting up flagpoles. So you can create features of, of locations if you need them. The more difficult ones is when you need meta, feature, meta features of locations. For example, uh, you need to know that you're in a particular city or county. Um, the GC who reran the co-ed SF minigame, the GC who reran uh, Bing 28 as Snap 8, basically fudged this by just reminding teams ahead of time. This didn't really bother participants. You just said, by the way, know that the original event was held at, you know, whatever the name of that park was, Morgan Hill, Santa Clara County, et cetera, et cetera. I don't spoil that puzzle for you, but it's okay. Um, uh, so almost wrapping up here. So the ultimate question here is, is it easier? Is it easier to recast an event than it is to run a new event? Uh, yes, with a maybe. Um, the, what you get if you're recasting is a bunch of puzzles that, that work, right? They've, they've been tested by scores of teams, a hundred people. So you have a lot of great play test data, but, uh, it depends on what event you're putting on. If you're putting on a bang, that's probably most of the work, right? That plus a couple of street corners and you could almost throw together a bang that very quickly. I exaggerate. For longer games though, there's a lot more work involved and I think, uh, Bob may even go into some detail in a few minutes about about that. Where there's there's scouting, there's negotiating with lo with your locations, there's buying food, they're still doing an on-site playtest of a weekend-long event. Those, having those puzzles that already just work, that's a lot of uh, that's a big help. But that's not all of it. So it, if you think you can recast an event by, with a couple of weekends of work, like if you can recast a weekend-long event, you're you're, you're wrong. But uh, <laughs> Is it going to be less work than putting one on together from scratch? Probably not. One of the one one respondent did point out a, a good point, uh, uh, made a good point in his survey. The, uh, sorry, that person's survey, that uh, recasting is a nice way of getting yourself into putting on an event. What I've heard from people who are not just those people who I surveyed, but other people as well, that you know, why have you never put on or Sorry, that sounds accusatory. Um, have you ever thought about putting on an event? <laughs> and the response is, oh my gosh, I could never come up with a puzzle, let alone eight, let alone 12, let alone 20. Well, this is a recasting is a, a means of being given a bunch of puzzles that just work. Now you have to do you know, only the work that you think you can already do, right? Find some locations, find some friends to help you. So it's a good way to get into doing that. Uh, and again, the theme that I've, I've said a couple of, in a couple of these slides is just set expectations with your, between original GC and recasting GC so that nobody is surprised at the end, you know, especially about editorial control, about what that event should feel like, about you know, how you're going to deal with money uh, and you know, other, other changes. So that's a set of slides I've got. And hopefully I have time for you know, a few questions and some discussion if there's any. Okay, so you talked about documenting and being able to transfer knowledge, like about scouting in particular. What are the sort of things that you've, maybe lessons learned that you have wanted to communicate to people about scouting particular puzzles? Um, I'm not sure I quite follow what, the, what you're asking. Well, so there's certain things like make sure there's bathrooms available, make sure that there, there's a checklist. What are, what's on your checklist? Oh, uh, so. I think that question is a little outside of oh, like just recasting. I mean, I could answer that, but I think it's a little outside of, of okay. specifically for recasting. I mean, because when it comes to like scouting for for puzzle uh, in that way, so let me ans answer a slightly different question. Okay. Scouting when you already have a set of puzzles does change what you're looking for. Whereas before, like when, when the Burninators are run, uh, put on puzzle events, we kind of have some ideas for puzzles, but we also just kind of are looking for interesting locations. And we can right. change one or the other uh, to match a really great location, a really great puzzle. Whereas if you're given, all right, here's the 24, 24 puzzles for this event, you really can't change any of those puzzles uh, a lot. Uh, one thing that we, that one interesting thing we learned uh, in from from Who was, one of the puzzles, the one with the um, the glass eye, that puzzle was inspired by a location, uh, the glass bridge at um, uh, in Tacoma at the Shuhuli Museum. Um, so that it was a, the location. My understanding was the location was chosen first. That gave way to a really neat puzzle, uh, a, a neat artifact for a puzzle. When it came down here to the Bay Area, we then looked for a location that would match the puzzle, uh, and uh, but then we. Uh, 
what, what was interesting is that we did not re understand the causal, causal connection, location led to puzzle until later. Uh, uh, and down here in the Bay Area, kind of the causal connection went the other direction. We had that interesting puzzle. We went looking for a good matching location. So in some ways, it's kind of nice to know what those connections are, because if you do need to change something, if you're like, wow, I really just, I can't find a glass studio. Is it really important that it be a glass studio? Maybe the answer is no, or maybe it's okay to change the puzzle. There's a Seattle question. Okay, Seattle, let's question hear Question from Seattle. Um, you mentioned uh, in your second slide, I think, about sometimes GC, the other GC would want to rebuild something. Um, do you have a concrete example? I mean, when you're talking about software tools, are you talking about puzzles, or I just could, didn't know what, what was represented? Sure. So one thing that happened in Who is we had a, um, in the Into the Woods uh, puzzle, it had a telephone uh, uh, system. You had to call in and and provide some information, and it gave you some information back. Uh, this is a puzzle that had the little boxes with blinky lights. Uh, and um, we ended up rebuilding the uh, telephone dial-in system uh, locally here. Uh, we probably could have just used the ver In the end, we probably could have just used the version that Seattle had provided. Uh, it was still on. We, we we rebuilt it locally for two reasons. One was uh, we had a small, we wanted to make a small change to the system that we felt would improve it. Uh, and the other is uh, it just didn't seem like it would be that. It so how to put this? Uh, it meshed well with uh, a particular person's interest in learning something about that system. So basically, the, the, there was relatively little cost. Uh, and it also was able to improve an aspect of this puzzle. So that's an example of, you know, could we have used a dial-in system again? Sure, but we didn't. So are you telling me that you uh, took a bunch of L-wire and Arduino controller and a bunch of other stuff that I don't even understand, sent it up north with the written instructions and they figured it out? <laughs> Mostly yes. Um, so big credit to, uh, 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 oh, I'm not going to get everyone, but you know, the, the folks like Jeff Fye especially who received an enormous you know, uh, pile of packages. Yes, we, we took all of the components of Bing 28, put them in several boxes, and just you know, hail married it up to Seattle. Um, they, they received it, including a box that was like this tall of the L-wire fencing. Um, the, we didn't include, so what, what we included as directions for them was a website that had all of our original, all of our final files, a website, a playbook that was, as I was describing uh, here, in fact, on this slide, notes for game day volunteers, so that uh, someone who was not on GC would be able to understand the final version of all the puzzles. And this is where our conference call was really useful, where we could, now that they, they, I didn't do the best job packing everything. And it was, I mean, everything mostly didn't get broken, but it was like, okay, now I have a living room full of crap. Now what do I do? Uh, <laughs> throw bang, yes, exactly. The, um, <laughs> the IKEA of games. Yeah, yes, it's, it's the, the IKEA of games. Um, this is what the, the conference call is really useful for is, so I now have a lot of little pieces. Nowhere on the website would it even have made sense to try to document like, you know, piece A goes with piece B, but it would be a lot easier to say like, okay, here is, you know, you should be looking at these things. They kind of go together. Oh, I understand. And it, it, it made for that connection. Um, yeah, the Bing 28 was kind of extreme in, in how much physical stuff we had to send. Uh, who had plenty of stuff to send as well though? Uh, Rich is, one of Rich's living rooms was um, filled with boxes as well, I noticed. So I've, I've got more of a comment than anything else. Um, but for, from the originating side of GC, if you find a simulcast host, it's a, it's a good idea to do so quickly because they're a good source of play tests as well, um, a beta team if nothing else. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, one of the things that anecdotally Bing 28 suffered from was uh, everyone wanted to play and nobody wanted to test. And uh, I, th this has been an issue that we've kind of seen a couple of times now as burdenators at least when putting on games is there's a lot of people who want to play. So if you can find that simulcast, simulcast team, 
they can test for you. They're, they're a cohesive team um, instead of just a couple of, ramp, uh, couple of uh, uh, straggling people. Um, so that's really useful. One of the respondents in the survey pointed out that they, for doing their simulcast, they first had, they were basically puzzle complete. They knew all the puzzles that they wanted before signing on a simulcast t uh, GC. And it sounded like that worked pretty well for them, is that they knew they wanted to, that it was worked better for them to have fewer people involved in writing the, the puzzles initially, and then more people for in, iterating. Uh, the Who and Bing 28 both, uh, the, the recast didn't even come up until we were almost upon both of those games. And had we known it a little bit ahead of time, yeah, that probably would have been a useful thing to have had that extra you know, set of eyes to be able to play these and things. Great, thanks.